Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. So today we are going to do a how-to video, and it is how to shoot that uh, that new Bard Rock uh, goblet uh, slingshot I've been making. Um, put these up on the, the website the other day, and I think so far I've sold uh, five of them. Um, so it seems like it's uh, pretty good. I'm waiting on some feedback from the guys that are getting them, though. Um, but anyways, uh, so this slingshot comes banded and ready to go, okay, which is kind of a, it's not all that common, okay, so I, I've bought now, oh, I don't know, a whole bunch of slingshots from, you know, uh, not really any, like, complete custom makers, but like a semi-custom or a, um, a kind of a small batch production type slingshot makers, and it seems like the majority of them come, um, you know, unbanded. Um, I kind of sort of get that on a liability type standpoint, but when I was a kid, every slingshot I ever bought was, it came with bands on it. From Marksman, Daisy, Truemark, <clears throat> all the big names, they always came with the bands, the first set of bands installed. Now these being flat bands, um, they're... You know, you don't just, uh, you know, lick the ends of them and then, you know, push it onto the, the yoke like the old uh, wireframe slingshots. You know, you have to tie these bands on. So I decided that I wanted to go ahead and, and ship them out ready to go so that you could at least shoot the thing for a while while you started learning up on how to, um, you know, how to tie the things. And that way they're, they're banded ready to go. They're correct right off the bat. These, uh, uh, these bands are set up for um, target ammo, so 8 mil steel, 9 to 10 mil clay. clay. You can get away with um, like a quarter inch steel, it's just a little bit on the fast side, you'll get some hand slap. And you can still shoot some 3 8 inch steel, only uh, it'll just be a little bit on the slow side. But anyway, so these target bands are just that target bands, they are for learning. Um, and learning and just having fun, which is which is really what slingshots are all about, um, and that's why I'm making these things is so that you know we can all have fun and uh, um, you know honestly act like we're kids again with slingshot in our back pocket. So anyway, so we're going to go over how to shoot this slingshot. Um, I am um, I am going to have a uh, you know like an instruction sheet. Uh, that will be included with uh, the slingshot sooner or later. I'm not an artist. I'm trying to find somebody that can draw what I've got in my head. Um, and then as soon as I get that done, then those will start being included with the slingshots. Until then, <coughs> I went out and bought a, uh, uh, a new Marksman. Um, can't remember the model number. Uh, but it's, it's the, the wireframe type with the, the wrist brace that folds in half. I uh, got it at the local uh, Murdoch's and I went ahead and photocopied their instruction sheet um, left the left the marksman name on there so you know I mean it's uh, it is what it is until I can find somebody to draw what I want this is kind of the best we've got and it's still got marksman's name on it you know it's a plug for them also I mean since I was about six years old, I don't even know how many of those marksman um, slingshots I've had. And those are the instructions that I learned on when I was a kid. So, honestly, they're like a classic, right? Okay, so, the uh, Bard Rock Goblet Style Slingshot. Okay, so it comes banded and ready to go, right? We've got these little smiley faces on uh, the tops of the bands. Okay, the reason for that is these slingshots... They're over the top, okay? So when you, you make sure that that band comes over the top and then you pull it. That's kind of backwards. Over the top and then pull, okay? Never pull directly against your, your tie-in material, okay? You might get lucky and get a couple of shots off before it slips out or breaks. Uh, it might slip out on the first shot. I don't, honestly, I don't know. I've never, never done that. So over the top. So if you can see the smiley faces, then that part's good, okay? Um, some of the uh, uh, the pouches, right now I've got two different types of pouches that um, uh, I'm not sure which one is gonna be, is gonna win out on the standard, you know, pouch that comes with these. <clears throat> right now it's a cross between these right here, the Simple Shot um, large microfiber pouch, 
And then the other one is a GZK um, microfiber pouch that's uh, blue on one side and yeah, blue on the inside and uh, gray on the outside. But anyway, so pretty much you want to put the ammo in the pouch like this so that it looks like there's a trough or a V running down. So if you were to drop a ball here, it would roll down and drop off in between. Okay, so, so this is good. This is not. So you can still see the smiley faces, but there's this weird looking twist in the bands. So that's no good. That is good. Okay? All right. <coughs> Your grip. Um, these things right here, I mean, they are a full, <coughs> a full size slingshot. Okay? I wear an extra large glove size. Depends on the, the model. Um, sometimes I got to, you know, get the glove on, get it wet and form it before it's kind of comfortable. Um, sometimes not. But, you know, I've got normal size hands. Seems to me like an awful lot of slingshots out there are made for uh, youths. You know, they're, they're kind of on the small side. This one is not, at least this original model. So, with this slingshot, you can hold it in one of four different grips. Okay, you can do the hammer grip, like that. Um, this would work, especially if you were, you know, a, a youngster or had really, really tiny hands. Um, for me, it's a little bit uncomfortable because this part right here is burying itself into the heel of my hand. Okay, but you can grip it like that. All right, again, make sure the bands come over the top. Okay, the second grip would be the full pinch grip. Okay, that's where that, it just comes right up. And you just pinch it. Okay, uh, the third grip is the grip that I like the most. It's um, kind of a cross between a pinch grip and a thumb supported grip. And that's, instead of holding it like this, I just lift my thumb up and put it on the outside. And then kind of shift it around in there until it feels good. And bam, that's my, that's my normal grip. <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the last grip would be, um, I guess you could call this a, a, a thumb-supported uh, pinch grip, I guess. Uh, the last one would be to put your index finger on the top of the fork also. I'm not exactly sure what you would call that, but I've seen a lot of guys shoot like that. Okay, pretty much anything is okay as long as you keep your fingies out of this cup area here. Okay, if you get a fork hit, a fork hit is when uh, you you have your pouch twisted or the frame is twisted really weird or you know I don't know maybe the gods are just against you that day and the the ammo, instead of going straight over the top, through the, the cup, kind of goes to the side and it strikes the, the fork tip, okay? If that happens and you have a grip like, say, that, where your thumb is sticking up, well, heck, even like that, um, you know, you're likely to catch the tip of your thumb with your ammo anyway. But if you're holding it in a real severe um, fork supported style and that ball catches the edge of your thumbnail that the that thumbnail is going to turn black and it's not going to feel all that good so keep your fingies out of this cup area okay uh, so let's see that goes over uh, pouch orientation band orientation and grips okay so now what we want to do is we want to talk a little bit about um, holding the holding the actual slingshot for fire Okay, so you're going to want to make sure that the uh, um, the fork is at roughly 90 degrees to the bands. Okay, so when you pull it back, you want to make sure that, that those fork tips are pretty much straight up and down. You don't want them like this, and you don't want them like this. Okay, it's pretty much straight up and down. With this design, with this rounded off tip here, if you want to, instead of holding it at 90 degrees, you can angle it forward a little bit and it won't hurt nothing. You could also kind of angle it back a little bit and it wouldn't hurt nothing. But pretty much 90 degrees, both this way and this way. <coughs> All right, so that uh, takes care of that. Now the next one is uh, pouch loading. Uh, actually, 
Let's grab a couple of these clay balls. They might be a little bit easier to see. Okay, so this is a 9, 10, 11 millimeter clay ball, which uh, I include like 50-ish of these. Um, I counted out 50, weighed them on the scale, and then, you know, wrote that number down, and then, um, in, in a dish, and then I just grabbed a handful, and as long as it went over that weight, then I bagged them and ready to go. You know, I'm not going to count, <clears throat> you know, 50 individual balls into a bag. Okay, so with these pouches, they have got a hole in the middle. Okay, that is a locating hole. All right, so it's kind of sort of a, a centering type of deal too. Okay, so that ball goes right in the middle of that pouch up against that hole. Then the pouch gets folded around it. And then the edges of your pouch should be roughly the same. Okay, I should get back here and see what you're seeing. Yep, so this pouch, the top of this side and the top of this side should be at about the same. Okay, it should be centered left to right in there. And then the grip. Now there's several different, you know, standardized grips. The grip that I use is uh, I line up the edge of this pouch with the edge of that crease uh, on the first knuckle on my index finger in my left hand. Okay, and then put my thumb over the top of it, okay, so that I'm gripping the ball, not in front of the ball. I think maybe you can see it right there. That might have been better. Uh, actually, let me grab a, uh, let me grab like a 7 16 ball. These are big and shiny. Okay, so I line that up with the edge of the joint there. The thumb goes on top. Ah. This is kind of tough to do in front of a camera here, in front of you. All right, so it'll be held like that. Okay, now when you grab that thing and you pull back, okay, see how there's space? See how you can see space through there? So if I pinch it, there's no space. But if I have the proper grip, there is space, okay? Since we got it loaded up, let's go ahead and shoot it. Um, we'll go over uh, anchor points next. Okay, so <clears throat> everybody's a little bit different. <coughs> The bone structure in your face, um, how tall you are, how long your arms are, exactly how you hold the slingshot, all that kind of stuff, okay? <clears throat> These bands are set up for a face anchor, okay? Which means that you anchor on the face, and then you push your slingshot out, and then you fire, okay? Um, butterfly shooting, where you hold way, way out like this, um, needs longer, longer band set, okay? Or half butterfly, where you come out to say here, like uh, like what Bill Hayes does. Okay, that needs a longer band set. This is set up for a face, a face anchor, anchor to the face. You could probably get away with a little bit more, depends upon your height and everything. I'm six foot tall. <clears throat> I remember when I was a kid. Uh, you know, well, the last time that. <clears throat> you know, I did the height thing versus your wingspan thing that I, they said I was a square. So I was as my wingspan was as wide as I am tall. I don't know if that changes as you grow up, but you know, so I've got roughly a six foot wingspan and six foot tall. So if you're shorter than that, you can probably get away with a little bit longer um, draw. If you're taller than that, you probably want to stick with the face anchor. But that can be adjusted the next time that you, uh, you know, tie on your bands. Okay, so, um, let's see, the face anchor portion. Okay, so when I, these are, it's way easier to hold it um, with a ball in there. So when I anchor, I anchor the top of my thumbnail goes to the outside edge of my cheekbone, okay? 
so like this and then I tuck that that thumbnail up pretty hard into that cheekbone high elbow in the back um, aim and fire and miss right because it's on camera okay sometimes you know somebody might want to be a little bit closer so on so the outside edge of your cheekbone inside edge of your cheekbone some folks go you know thumbnail in the corner of the mouth um, some folks go you know thumb down on the jawline you know I mean whatever's comfortable for you and whatever works for your sighting system all right now the sighting system the way these things are sighted <clears throat> already said that uh, remember we were talking about 90 degrees this way and 90 degrees this way right okay well there's also another one and that is putting your bands on top of each other okay so right here I can see just pretty much one band set if I close my right eye. If I turn it this way, I see the top set and the bottom set. That's no good. If I turn it this way, I see the top set and the bottom set. That's no good. I need to turn it until I see just one band set. Okay? <clears throat> Once I have just one band set like that, what I need to do is take the line that's created from that band set and put it directly underneath whatever it is that I want to hit. <coughs> so right now, so right now I am aiming directly at the lens. Okay? So you should see a straight line between that band going all the way to underneath my eye where my anchor point is. Okay? Then what you do so that takes care of the majority of your left and right. Your up and down is determined by your, your fork tip. Okay? So when I shoot, whatever it is that I want to hit, I'll take a chicken water. If that's my bullseye, I want to bring that fork tip right in the middle of that bullseye. Okay. If that fork tip is right in the middle of my bullseye and my bands are lined up underneath it and everything is pretty much square, all right, and my release is good, then I am going to hit that bull. If I go left of that bull, then I can correct for that either by aiming to the right or changing my face anchor point. If I uh, hit low, then I can either drop my anchor point or I can aim higher on the fork tip. So instead of putting the fork tip on the bull, I would raise it up some, okay, to compensate for elevation. Okay, so now let's uh, now let's just do a little bit of shooting. So we are at. I mean, this is a pretty easy shot. Now, of course, now that I say it's an easy shot, watch where you miss a whole bunch of them, right? Uh, okay, so that right there is the catch box. That white dot in the middle with the orange or the red dot inside that is an 80 mil uh, spinner okay one of the uh, microfiber ones from uh, GZK I think okay so when I hit it it'll spin around okay so I'm gonna shoot the 8 mil steel got it loaded up in the pouch the pouch is pretty much even I grab a hold of it the way that uh, the way that I like to make sure that it's not twisted or anything right when I pull it back to my face, okay, pull it back, put my fork tip on the red dot in the middle, and shoot. Okay, uh, we'll do two or three more of those. Just because, honestly, it's really fun to see the thing flip around. And that sound is a really cool sound, too. So remember, smiley faces are on top, so the bands are going over the fork tips okay gripping the ammo in the pouch not in front of the pouch so that there's that space in front of the the ammo there okay using the grip that i like that feels comfortable coming back to my anchor point put uh jamming the top of that thumbnail in the outside corner of my cheekbone okay putting the fork tip on the target and release Okay. Uh, one thing that I will mention 
is that with that anchor point of mine, since I jam that thumbnail up high inside of my cheekbone, that thumbnail really can't move to release the ammo, or that thumb, my thumb can't move. Okay, so the only way that that ammo can get released is if I drop my, uh, my index finger. Okay, so that's just one thing that kind of helps me make a little bit more consistent release is because I've only got one finger moving. Okay, I'm not trying to match up one finger with the other, trying to make sure that they open at the same time, all that kind of stuff. It's all in my index finger. <clears throat> so I think now what we're going to do is I'm going to put you behind me and I'm going to shoot a couple of shots. And then I'm going to put you to the side and then I'll shoot a couple of shots and then maybe to the front and shoot a couple of shots. Remember, smile, smiley faces on top, so it's over the top. Make sure the pouch is lined up to where I have that trough. Grip the pouch so that, you know, uh, I'm gripping the ammo, not the pouch. Anchor point, elbows high, I'm nice and tall. And of course that time I miss. I was wondering when I was going to miss on camera. How about one more? Okay, so that's from the back. You'll just have to listen for the sound to uh, um, see if I hit it or not. Okay, there's three shots from the side. Now we're going to put you right in front of me. Now one thing to watch for here, <coughs> and you might have already seen it before, is that I have a tendency to drop my hand. Actually, I actually have a tendency to drop both hands. Um, I should probably leave them up for a little bit longer. <coughs> But I think it's kind of a throwback from when I was a kid. Um, you know, I mean, when I was a kid shooting the old wrist rockets and rocks, um, you know, I mean, we missed more than we hit, really. And so it was kind of a, you know, shoot and then get everything down so that you could reload and go to shoot again. Oh, speaking of which, rocks are really a no-go in this type of slingshot, okay? When you have got a small cup like this, um, Rocks are kind of not such a good idea, um, which is why I included the clay ammo and the, the steel ammo. If you, if you find yourself in a situation where you have to shoot a rock, um, first get yourself out of that situation and make sure you carry plenty of ammo. Um, if you absolutely must shoot a rock, grab ones that are about the size of your, your thumb to the first joint, big ones. Okay, the more round the better. Try to stay away from sharp edge ones. And then make sure that when you go to shoot, you kind of exaggerate and do like a flip motion, okay? With a little bit of luck, as the rock is coming over the top of the forks, the forks will be out of the way before it gets there, okay? But rocks in general on a slingshot like this are kind of a bad idea. Save your rocks for wireframe slingshots or slingshots with, with large cups, <clears throat> and and really wide fork tips, okay? <clears throat> yeah, see, I thought that I dropped my hand really, really bad, and then the last time I videotaped myself, I mean, I remember dropping my hand really bad, but on the, 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 the footage, I actually had two separate movements. It shot or I shot and then dropped. Whereas in person, it just felt like it was one. Also the hand, um, 
your pouch hand, it should stay when you, uh, when you finish your shot also. But I have a tendency to let go and come back. Uh, let's do like two more of those. Because this is a this is an angle that you don't get to see very often in how to shoot slingshot videos. Because nobody likes to put the camera right in front of when they're, where, they're, where they're shooting. Actually, there's that one. So let's put one. Let's do a couple right here. And then maybe one up real close. That way you can kind of see my anchor point and see what portion of my finger is moving. Also see if I hold my mouth open or not when I shoot, huh? I think, uh, yeah, we'll probably do two more of that one. Because see, when you're when you're watching the guys that are really good, um, the guys like uh, Nathan Masters, uh, Gamekeeper John, uh, Chris from Catapult Carnage, um, that one dude that uh, that has the Evo goblet. Um, Oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, it's not Catapult Carnage. It's... Anyway, just Google uh, Evo Goblet and you'll come across them. I mean, those guys are... <clears throat> I mean, they're phenomenal. I mean, I mean, really. I mean, <clears throat> Bill Hayes. Bill Hayes is another one. I mean, that dude's lighting matches and splitting playing cards and stuff like it's... You know, I mean, he makes that stuff look cool, right? I mean, the two playing cards that I've got, my first two that I cut, took me two days to cut the things. Um, I had 27 cards that were partially cut. <clears throat> so if that was a playing card, you know, they'd be, I'd hit a little bit of the end, so it'd be cut this far, or it'd be cut halfway, or it'd be up here, or a couple of them were just barely hanging on. 27 cards that were partially cut before I got two of them that cut clean all the way through. And those guys, man, they do it like it's, uh, they're just amazing. Me, I'm just kind of an average shooter. Um, I would kind of class myself as being uh, proficient with a slingshot, um, which in my mind means that, generally speaking, I can make the slingshot do what it needs to do, okay? So that is, <clears throat> for me, um, you know, hunting accuracy on, say, a cottontail rabbit from, you know, anywhere from 7 yards out to about 15 yards. Depends on the day. Some days you just shoot better than others. Um, it's It means, you know, shooting a clay ball into the garden to scare away the, um, uh, the starlings or the sparrows getting into the green beans. Um, it means... Um, you know, if we're out on, and my wife and I are out on a hike, maybe doing some creek fishing or something, you know, she sees a snake, um, you know, dispatching the, the snake with, uh, you know, I mean, just dispatching it and calling it good. Um, and hunting uh, ground squirrels here around my place, especially this time of the year, you know, they're waking up, uh, my wife's putting her garden in, and, you know, it's the green beans are the ground squirrels, so the ground squirrels have got to go, right? Um, but I'm not, I mean, I have cut some playing cards. I have not yet tried to light a match, um, you know, but I'm proficient with the slingshot. I mean, honestly, I'm not really anything special like those, those other guys. So <clears throat> if you want to do some more homework and see some of those guys that are truly amazing, uh, on YouTube, you got uh, Bill Hayes, you got Nathan Masters. Nathan Masters also, he's with Simple Shot. Uh, simpleshot.com. He's also got a $50 course uh, slingshot mastery, if I remember right. If you've got the extra $50, that is an incredible course. I mean, that guy goes through, he goes through pretty much everything. Um, I've, I bought the course and I think 
I've watched it twice and I really need to go back and, and watch it a third time also. Um, it truly is that good. Um, uh, John Webb, I think is his name. Uh, he's Gamekeeper John on YouTube. Um, Chris, can't remember his last name. He's with Catapult Carnage on YouTube. Um, these guys, like I said, I mean, they are, um, they are top-notch shooters. Maybe in another five or ten years where the practice, I'll be able to, you know, kind of, I don't know, be at that level. But honestly, as long as I can make my slingshot do what I need it to do, then, um, then I'm good. They're good enough. And the rest of it's just practice, and we can never have enough practice. So I think, uh, I think that's about it. We went over, uh, over the top. Band position, pouch hold, uh, anchor point, uh, grips on the slingshots, um, not to shoot rocks. Uh, let's see, holding the frame 90 degrees this way and this way, uh, holding the band set or the bands on top of each other, uh, aiming both left and right and up and down. Uh, yeah, the rest of the stuff you'll learn as you go. You know, breathing, um, holding still, trust in the wiggle, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I might do some more videos on those also. But anyway, this was just supposed to be kind of an overview. Try to cram as much as I possibly could into, you know, an overview video on shooting your, your new slingshot. So again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Um, if you'd like to, you can pick up one of these uh, Bard Rock uh, goblet-style slingshots that I'm making, or pick up one from somebody else, or grab that one that's in the, you know, in the attic that's been there for 20 years and pull that thing back out, get a new set of bands on it, and, um, and get to shooting. Um, like I said, the reason I'm making these is pretty much any time I pick one up, or somebody comes over and I let them borrow one, or uh, I've given them several of them away. Pretty much any time somebody picks these things up, even if they're missing and they get four kits, and pretty much everybody says that shooting them makes them feel like a 10-year-old kid again. And that's a feeling I think we need to keep going. So again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.